Hello everybody, Jim here, coming to you on a nice warm night here at the uh, the tail end of May. Yeah, we're just getting into June now, and uh, it's warming up, so that's nice. Summer rapidly approaches, and uh, as I sit here once again on my soda, sipping a little beer, and uh, kicking my feet up, I wanted to uh, talk about some more of this stuff I had going on on Twitter. The last video I did was um, uh, sort of motivations for uh, content creators here on YouTube and elsewhere. And I uh, invited people to give their input on Twitter, and a number of people did. And so that was uh, enjoyable, reading all those responses. I normally am not very active on Twitter at all. And I definitely don't get that many responses to uh, things I tweet, but as it turns out, if you invite people to give their inputs, uh, they will. So that's uh, what I did once again, only this time uh, I invited people to uh, tell me what some of their least favorite things are that they see on YouTube from creators that they otherwise enjoy watching their content. And I got a lot of responses, and so I'm going to read some of them uh, and sort of evaluate some of the points they make and whether or not I agree, if it's something that I don't like seeing, or maybe it's something that I don't mind, or is it something that I myself tend to do? Because uh, some of the stuff in here uh, is stuff that I, I do myself, starting with, um, we have a uh, response here from a fella named David Rutledge. He says, uh, in quotations, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever and whenever you're watching. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I will, and then it trails off. And then he says, just start your video, dude. And um, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure I 100% uh, like agree with that. It depends on the context of what the video is. Um, but I think a simple, greeting at the start of the of a video uh, I do not find that to be an annoyance especially if it's kept relatively short now if I'm watching like I don't know a documentary video or something I don't need it to start with someone asking me how my day was it's not really part of the content but if if the video itself the content itself is I don't know has sort of like a social component to it kind of like this one does and videos that I do like this they have sort of a, a conversational style to them and conversations usually begin with some sort of greeting um, so yeah I would say that would be out of place in certain videos but in other videos not so much uh, from Hoosier Rail Riders uh, long intros before actually getting to the meat of the content it's like come on man we know who you are we already read the title of the video and saw the thumbnail that's why we clicked, and trust me, we know how to like and subscribe. Everyone understands how YouTube works. So long intros, is that uh, an intro sequence, or is that kind of the same thing where it's like, uh, we don't need to be told uh, good morning and, and how are you and things like that. It's kind of like that episode of The, Stim uh, the Simpsons when it's Bart's Comet, and... Uh, uh, Professor Frink gets up on stage and he says, Good evening, everyone. And then a guy jumps up and he goes, Quit stalling! What's the plan? I feel like uh, you guys might fall into that category. Uh, randomly inserting, this is from Buchu, randomly inserting politics, polarizing social commentary or virtue signaling into their videos. And um, I would agree if... The, the video itself is, that's like not the content of the video. So there are political commentary channels and uh, things like that. Uh, channels, they talk about social issues or whatever. Um, obviously, if that's the content of the video on the channel, that's fine. It's on that channel. And if I don't want to watch it, I don't have to. But I can agree that if I'm watching a review of a video game or... or um, uh, movie or some other kind of media where it doesn't really seem like political or social commentary is very relevant and it's kind of shoehorned in there that is kind of annoying it's uh, kind of off topic uh, if I'm watching uh, a review or some other kind of content on some piece of media um, I, I like the conversation to be kept to that piece of media 
Um, if you're, you know, making a parallel to some sort of, um, you know, contemporary issue or something, you know, I suppose that's fine. But sometimes it's the, the connection isn't there. And so that's, um, yeah, eh, that's a little irritating. Uh, this comes from Scott's at Scott's Game Asylum. Um, addressing the audience, that the audience will have a different opinion to you. I think we all do it. Um, then he, he links to a video called Reviewer Brain. Or talking about a topic called Reviewer Brain. Yeah, just addressing, so like reviewing something. And then, uh, you know, constantly reiterating. This is just my opinion, etc, etc. Um, kind of isn't necessary. And uh, I think uh, uh, Dongled Mike Tendo here, he comments, you know, it's done to potentially avoid commenters who will whine that their opinion is the only one that matters, etc, etc. I think that's just sort of the... Um, kind of a preemptive strike, you know, where anytime you like review a piece of media or you talk about something and you give an opinion, um, for some people, unless you state, you know, expressly say, this is my opinion, um, they take it as though you are saying all of this is like the gospel truth. But most of us understand when we're hearing an opinion and we understand we're hearing something subjective. Um, but I guess that's just sort of like shielding so that, you know, when people come at you with, a, you know, a disagreement or they accuse you of maybe, um, sort of, uh, what, what's, what's the word I'm looking here? Um, kind of overvalue, maybe overvaluing your own opinion or kind of misconstruing what you're saying is like you're proposing it as objective truth. Um, yeah, but yeah, constantly restating, this is just my opinion, this is just my opinion, this is just my opinion. I mean, you know, you really only need it once. For me, if I'm watching a review, you don't ever have to say it because I, I know because it's a review and it's a piece of media and these are subjective, you know, thoughts. I understand already that it's an opinion. So yeah, I can, kind of, I can get on board with that. Um, the Daddy Otaku, when they have that annoying ding-ding sound to subscribe... Um, which, yeah, I know what you're talking about, and it is kind of irritating. And he says, uh, I'll add that I love the little interstitial bits from ads and stuff that you throw in yours. So that's, that's nice. I'm glad you like that. Um, show simply says, Rage Shadow Legends. And, uh, yeah, you, you get a little tired of hearing it. Um, I understand it for, like, well, yeah, I mean, I understand the motivation. You want to make some money, especially if, like, these bigger creators, I'm sure they get paid fairly well by whatever company it is that that um, produces Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, NG Gundam says uh, faces too close to the camera which is something that also irritates me. Um, that's why I usually try to stay far enough away from the camera. I don't need like my big goofy face dominating the image. Um, ben says dumb ass thumbnails clickbait material and feeding into mindless consumerism, which, I mean, if you're watching, like, a, a lot of gaming channels, retro gaming channels, retro gaming channels especially, if they focus a lot on collecting and things like that, then um, the, the consumerism is there. I mean, it's what video games and media are all about. They produce media and you buy it. Buy, buy, buy. They produce, you consume. Um, dumbass thumbnails... Yeah, I can agree with that, but that's, you know, debatable on what's dumb and what's not. And then clickbait material, um, which I will agree on. It's kind of uh, easy, easier these days than ever to spot clickbait, though, so it's pretty uh, well avoidable. Dongled, Mike Tendo, a guy I've known on uh, YouTube for quite a long time now, says, you know what I absolutely hate? Reviews with skits in them. That's the worst, and long intros. Like, anything longer than 10 seconds is a waste of my time. I also don't like anything fun. Which, uh, Mike is obviously being facetious, because his reviews are very heavy on the skits, and he has a, a lengthy intro and uh, things like that. And that's, you know, some reviewers, they do well with skits. Um, an, an enjoyable part of any review they do is the skits and sort of the, the comedic writing they did, that, that they do. Um, one of my favorite reviewers uh, on YouTube or in the history of YouTube, regardless of how he, you know, uh, ended up on his channel or what opinion you might have of him, was uh, Spoonie. I always really enjoyed his reviews 
uh, because he was actually, you know, he was able to write, you know, funny uh, reviews, edit them well, and then his skits were funny as well. So if you want to watch a review and then there's skits and the skits are just like unfunny and hard to watch, um, I would say like some of the um, Cinemassacre, like uh, Angry Video Game Nerd uh, episodes, I believe one which was very difficult to watch was, I think it was the, um, whichever one it was with the Aladdin thing in it, that was kind of hard to watch because, I mean, Angry Video Game Nerd is heavy on, on skits. The whole video is basically a skit. They're comedic reviews. So that means that it has, you know, it has to be like funny, um, in order to be enjoyable. And that one wasn't. So a funny skit, a well-made skit is always very welcome in any, uh, review. Um, but if the skits are not funny as all, yeah, it can definitely kill the review. Um, so I like and don't like skits at the same time. Again, it's very contextual whether or not it's good. Um, Rob Noir, the constant asking for people to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. It's even worse when they try to make it into some kind of a joke or a gag. It gets so old so fast, especially when channels do it in every single video or multiple times per video. And uh, yeah, that's something I, you know, I typically avoid uh, doing on my channel is, hey, this is your first time, like the, comment, subscribe, etc, etc. Uh, I typically avoid doing that, and uh, I don't really, you know, typically if I'm watching a, a channel that I haven't watched before and I'm enjoying the videos, I kind of already have it in my head that I want to see more and I can subscribe, so. Um, but I understand it's, it's referred to as the quote-unquote call to action. Um, and I think, you know, people do that and then they, they, they continue to do it because they see a positive change in their numbers, the viewership. Um, so uh, if you find it irritating, yeah, but I guess if it didn't work, people probably wouldn't do it. Um, FG Software uh, says, this video is sponsored by NordVPN, Raid Shadow Legends, Surfshark, whatever, instant skip. Uh, this is where the pattern starts. Um, yeah, the, um, what is it? The sponsored, uh, sponsored content. Um, you know, stuff like this, NordVPN, Raid Shadow Legends, uh, things like that. Again, one of my favorite people on YouTube still to this day is Jontron. Um, I think he's very funny and he makes very funny skits. He writes, you know, great jokes or I'm sure he has writers too that help him, but uh, generally speaking, I really enjoy John Tron's videos as well. Uh, for the same thing, I really enjoyed Spoonie's old reviews. It's just, they're funny. They're, they're, they're good videos. They're entertaining to watch. Um, and John is definitely someone who, who goes heavily into the, uh, the Rage Shadow Legends, the NordVPN, and stuff like that. Um, but with that stuff, it's obviously something you can skip. Um, and I, I'm forgiving, more forgiving if it's from a channel that I actually really enjoy the content. Uh, Sentient 6, I gotta be honest and say getting the actual info information wrong is uh, number one for me. Um, but I have a long list of pet peeves. Yeah, if, I mean, if you're watching a video, I don't know, for some sort of informational purposes and the information is just flat out wrong, yeah, that's, that's really annoying. Or potentially if like you watch a review from someone who it seems like they really didn't do their due diligence and they're kind of um, just shitting out a review as quickly as they can um, or discussing something without really knowing the full context of it that could be really annoying when the, the, there's just information coming across that's wrong and then you as the content creator you look you know like you're definitely not a trustworthy source of information um, Murray Lane, uh, Murray Lane fitting the length of the video to maximize the number of ads they can squeeze in. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's irritating. Um, kind of don't want to watch the whole video if that's the case. If you're just stretching, you know, filler, filler, filler to just barely hit that eight minute mark so you can throw in a mid-roll ad. That's, yeah, that's kind of irritating and it hurts your content as well. Um, because filler is, you know, not really any good. And I, myself, I'm guilty of making entire videos that are nothing but filler. Um, just because I was like, man, I don't have anything for the channel this week. I better, you know, 
have something, which I'm trying to, definitely trying to come away from. I'm trying to go for the quality over quantity thing. Although you could argue that I'm not really doing so great at that either. Charlie Cat, not making Neo Geo their top priority, Jim. I know, I know Charlie Cat. Uh, you just, why can't every YouTube channel be a Neo Geo channel? Um, let's see, Fort Wizzy, poor ad placement. I like how Practical Engineering says, the video is sponsored by X, but more on them later. Then, they put the ad at the end of the video, making it non-obtrusive, as opposed to dropping it uh, in the beginning or the middle. And I, I like that too. Um, if there's a video, you know, it, it's sponsored, and it says this video is sponsored by, you know, this sponsor, uh, stay tuned to the end of the video for more information on that or something. I'm assuming that if you do that, the sponsor pays less, but it is nicer for the viewers. Um, so you don't have to like skip over a chunk of the video or, you know, sit through a sponsored ad for something you didn't want anyway. I think someone here even mentions how they pay for YouTube Premium so they don't have, or you, is it YouTube Premium? So you don't have to see ads, but then there's an ad in the video anyway in the form of the, um, yeah, the, the sponsored stuff. Which I've been offered sponsorships, however, you know, a number of times. But it was always, like, it's always been stuff that I wasn't particularly interested in. Um, there was, what was it, like, uh, one of the snack box companies wanted me to do a review for, like, a snack box. And then there was a company they do, um, what are those things, shadow boxes? But they were, like, taking apart, like, Game Boys and things like that and putting them in the shadow boxes. And I thought they looked kind of cool, but then when I saw the price of them, how they were, like, hundreds of dollars, I was like, eh, no, I don't want to tell my audience to go spend hundreds of dollars on a dismantled Game Boy in a, in a glass case. I don't think that's worth it. So I've been offered sponsorships and I've thus far turned them all down. Um, but to be fair, I've never been offered a sponsorship where the, you know, the, the sponsor was offering to pay me like exorbitant amounts of money. I don't know. I'm only human. They brought a dump truck full of money up to my front door. I'm only human. Um, Craig of this reality, meta content, the here's what's up with the channel stuff, big irritation with podcasts too. Um, I do that occasionally when I feel like, like just recently when I was, I was like, okay, I'm going to take like two months away from publishing YouTube videos. People might wonder where I was or why I haven't published any videos. And to be fair, you could just put like a community post, but I'm not even sure how many people see those. Um, so I thought, you know what, an update video will um, get, get the information across a lot better than just like a community post or something like that. So try not to do too much stuff like that, too much of the quote unquote meta stuff, talking about, you know, situations, behind the scenes or anything, but occasionally an update video is helpful uh, for the, uh, the audience. Um, Paul Dobson says, product promotions, that's, again, that seems to be a running theme. People really don't like the uh, sponsored stuff, the product promotions. Uh, Destiny FOMO, good friend of mine, she says, open mouth thumbnails. Um, which I will agree with that. I don't care for that when I see like just a big gaping open mouth and a thumbnail. Someone, you know, pretending to be shocked by something. It just makes you, it just, it's, it's a turn off for me too. I don't know. It looks lame. It's, it's, you know, I, I, it's one of those things where it's like when I said like clickbait stuff is easier to spot now than it ever has been. Uh, that's, that's one of the signatures is it just if I look shocked and open my mouth as wide as possible, maybe people will think really cool stuff is happening. And the thing I notice about that um, mostly is reaction videos, which I don't like reaction videos. I don't watch them, but I do um, watch heavy metal videos on YouTube or like listen to them, you know, while I'm on the train or something and watch the videos. And if I watch like a string of Pantera videos, all of a sudden I'll start seeing like, Oh man, this is crazy! Pantera, Cowboys from Hell reaction, and it's like a dude just with his mouth open, and it's like, oh my god! And I'm just like, ah, uh, no, come on! I don't want to watch people react to music. I just want to listen to the music. So, whatever. 
Uh, HDRV simply says thumbnails, which I gotta, I gotta say, I think having thumbnails for the videos helps. If it was just a bunch of blank, I don't know, white or black or just one monochrome color, that might not get the information of the video across. So thumbnails in general, I approve of. Um, Martin Paoloni, long intros, 10 to 15 seconds should be the maximum. Sponsors included. Again, I'm going to assume you mean like an intro like sequence, like a title card. Which again, in the past, I've been guilty uh, when I was doing like longer episodes of Show Rebukin. I had that, that intro, and the intro was like 30 seconds. Um, and uh, that's why for the shorter ones, I had a little intro that was like 5 seconds or something. And then the current intro is what, like 13 seconds or something? Um, it's just, you know, for a series like that, I want to have a title card. Um, but I'll agree that like an excessively long intro sequence um, for every single video uh, can get a little irritating. Um, some, I don't know, some intro sequences though are like better than others, obviously. Um, I mean, it's not a YouTube uh, series, but like, for example, if I'm watching Unsolved Mysteries, I am never skipping that intro. Even if, you know, you're watching the one on Netflix, you can skip the intro all day. I never skip that intro. It's like the best part of any episode of Unsolved Mysteries is, is the intro. You watch that and then you kind of tune out and you're like, something spooky happened, that's cool. And you know, the Netflix series doesn't have Robert Stack anymore and he really tied that show together. Um, anyway, let's see. Magma says, not using metric measurements. Well, what can you do? Uh, Ronster, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, reaction videos, uh, which I, I uh, tend to agree. I see reaction videos come up in my uh, recommended all the time, again, because of the music videos and stuff I like to watch. And I just could not be less interested. Um, someone, uh, uh, M. Seamer, had an interesting thing here. He said, may I build on your question? Given a lot of what's in the below replies are habits of very successful creators, i.e. call to action stuff, uh, stuff in the thumbnails, the, the sponsored content, things like that. Um, he says, you know, those are habits of very successful creators, which is true because I mentioned like JonTron and, and Spoonie and they're like no limits to like other people who eat videos are sponsored by Raid and all that stuff. Um, he says, given that, how, you know, successful they are, how many creators in the replies would start doing these things if it meant a higher level of success in their own endeavors? And that's, um, that's a good question because, I mean, that comes back to uh, the previous video like this I did on motivations, motivations to produce content on YouTube. Uh, beyond just money because money is obviously always a motivator but is there something that you value more than that um, so if you told me that I would make more money by doing the thumbnails with a big wide open mouth and making reaction videos to things I don't really care about and just pretending to be excited about them or doing clickbaity things or having my Raid Shadow Legends stuff um, I don't think I would. I think I'm pretty happy with things as they are now. Um, you know, if, if I can just stick to what I'm doing and be happy with what I'm making and make some money, even if it's less money than I would make otherwise, I'm happy with it if I'm, you know, happy with the content I produce. Um, so no, I wouldn't replicate any of these things that I don't like. Although the stuff I'm contentious about the, um, for example, the, you know, having some sort of greeting at the beginning of a video that's meant to be conversational, um, or maybe like intros that are longer, or skits, or things like that. I'm not always opposed to those things, so I wouldn't be opposed to having that kind of stuff on my channel if I felt like it was warranted. Um, Paps Open, lots of mid-programming live sponsorship ads. I know it's a necessary evil because YouTube loves to demonetize small creators, but there are some creators with 4 million plus subs that are completely above board that still do it. Um, which, yeah, I, I get that. Even when you're at like that level where you have so many subs and so many views, you can be making 
more than a comfortable living uh, on YouTube, still the promise of even more money uh, than you're already making is kind of compels you to, um, yeah, put some of those annoying things in there. Uh, Nest Freak adds inside the videos, uh, here he says, since I got YouTube Premium, it's extra annoying, uh, too loud background music while talking, and too big a volume difference between talk and showing gameplay or playing music, which again, some of that, the, the audio stuff, I'm sure I'm guilty of plenty of times because I'm not exactly the best at like audio mixing when I'm editing. Um, so yeah, sometimes the music is too loud or maybe the difference in levels between the voice and the music aren't great. I, I cop to that. It's a, it's a learning process for me because I'm not a very good editor. So uh, yeah, what can you do? Um, someone just put, hey guys, <laughs> which uh, and then someone replies my kids legit thought YouTube was called hey guys for a bit which I don't, I don't think I say hey guys I say hey everybody which is totally different definitely different um, big C TV as a smaller creator myself I try to make videos that appeal to me as well as the audience this means my videos aren't hugely successful uh, but I'm still proud of them anyway um, yeah, and I guess that's that's something uh, that was touched on earlier, that a lot of these things that you know we all say we don't like, um, a lot of very successful people do this on YouTube, uh, the the sponsored things and the reactions and thumbnails and clickbait and all this other stuff. And a lot of people, you know, they do that, they get attract a big audience, and then they make a lot of money, and so we have to wonder like why is that so effective? But you know you get what you want out of it and what you put into it uh, more stuff here about clickbaits thumbnails f five minutes of preamble and then let's jump right in yeah five minutes is too much a nice greeting a nice intro that's good but uh, don't don't stretch it out in order again to make that that uh that like eight minute mark so you can put mid rolls in there um jonathan chapman has a laundry list here um uh, the same long intro to every video something we touched on uh, personal patreon stuff uh, at the front which yeah low you know at the start of the video before you even get to the content again going through the whole spiel of the call to action stuff um, which I think is cool like at the end of the video you get to the end of the video and you're showing us other videos to click on and you say if you enjoyed this here's all these other things that's fine because we've already watched the meat of your content um, reviews where skits take over again that's uh, sometimes good sometimes bad I like good skits I don't like bad skits uh, baked in ads where it's not labeled which yeah that's good too you know when the video comes on you like that see that little card that says this is a sponsored video uh, complaining about YouTube comments which yeah I don't need to, to hear about that keep it in the comments section uh, YouTube Twitter creator drama, which is something else I don't care for. Um, again, that's all, you know, stuff that, it, it's personal. It's like behind the scenes shit. Shouldn't make it everybody else's problem too. Um, it, 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 I, I realize a lot of people, if they dabble in drama and that kind of, I call it like the YouTube sewing circle because they just run off at the mouth about all kinds of dumb shit that most people with a functioning brain couldn't care less about. Um, so yeah, I mean, there have been channels in the past where I was like, oh, okay, this is a decent channel. And then in a like a desperate ploy for more views, they s start to, uh, you know, cultivate drama. And I'm just like, done, never watching this dog shit again. Uh, seven, complaining about algorithms and copyright systems. Again, I can agree with that because that's your own personal problem. I don't go to watch gaming channels or movie channels and stuff like that to hear about their personal um, sort of like uh, uh, problems that they're having with ad revenue or copyright, you know, things. Um, I have those issues. Everyone who makes monetized content on YouTube has those issues. Um, but again, that's stuff, you know, behind the scenes is where it's best. You know, if you're on new YouTube to entertain and inform, do that. Don't unload your problems on people. And lastly, he says political commentary, which again, if it's not relevant to what the content of the video is supposed to be, I can agree with that. 
If it is relevant to the topic being discussed, um, then I think it's okay. You can put it in there. Now, someone says mispronouncing things, which um, I don't particularly care about that. Um, shaving balls promos says uh, Ricky Misery, which I'm assuming he's referring to. What is that stuff called? Manscaped or whatever? The ball shaving ads, which uh, I like to watch Carl Jobst. I like his videos. He's done a bunch of stuff exposing like um, cheaters and speed running and video games and stuff like that. But he does uh, work in those ball shaver ads. Um, but he his content is really good, so I give it a pass. Uh, Bar uh, Barons just says ads, reaction videos, and completely uninformed opinions. And yeah, I'd say I agree with reaction videos. They typically suck. Uninformed opinions are, uh, you know, hard to listen to. Ads, on the other hand, um, no, that's that's how people actually make some money. Again, the, the sponsor stuff, like overloading things or purposely, like, putting lots of filler in your videos to artificially extend the length so you can have more ads, all that kind of stuff is kind of, you know, shitty. But just the concept of ads on YouTube in general, I don't have a problem with because obviously I have ads on my videos, other people do too. It puts a little bit of money in your pocket, which is nice. We could all use a little bit of that, especially those of us who um, don't already have like ridiculous amounts of money in the bank. Oh, what else we got? Still more stuff goes on. The usual misleading clickbait. Uh, if you can, hit the like and subscribe. Um, things like that. Politics, etc., etc. Uh, so yeah, lots of stuff. Got lots of replies on that. Um, generally speaking, a lot of the things people expressed here, uh, I can agree with. Um, yeah, I don't like uh, clickbait, especially if I'm going through looking at, you know, uh, whatever kind of video it is, music videos or something else. And then I, I start to see my recommended get populated with all kinds of clickbait of people reacting to bands and stuff, which, uh, you know, not interested. Uh, artificially stretching out videos or just stuffing videos with lots of filler in order to get them long enough for mid rolls it just it, just, it kills the video if the video is short it's short you know that it just there wasn't a whole lot of content there to begin with um, so I don't like that the the goofy thumbnails with the open mouth it, you know um, that's lame the YouTube drama stuff is lame um, and then again, like skits are bad when it's a bad skit, but if it's a good skit, I'm happy. I like it. I like it in the video. Sometimes the skit makes the video. Um, yeah, so I can agree with a lot of that. Some of the stuff I don't agree with, um, but there you go. So there are things on YouTube I don't like as a, as a YouTube viewer anyway. Um, so yeah, there you go. Whole bunch of people. Thank you to everyone anyway, who, uh, replied on Twitter. Uh, whether I agreed with your opinion or not, uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, give a little tweet at me. Because again, I'm not terribly active on like Twitter or, or social media in general. I'm not a very social media friendly guy. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I have all those things. Um, mostly I just use them to like post my videos and do little self-promotional things. Uh, I'm not too terribly active on them or I use them as a messenger. Like, I think, like, Twitter is my main messenger to talk to, like, a whole bunch of people that I just know through YouTube. Um, so I don't really do much with it, but I do talk to quite a lot of people on it. Anyway, uh, everybody, uh, thank you for uh, listening, for watching, whatever the case may be. And, uh, yeah, down in the comments, feel free to let me know. What is it, what, what are some things that you, as someone who watches YouTube that annoy you about uh, the videos you're watching even if the person making the video you generally like their content uh, you like the videos they put out but there are just those specific things um, that annoy you that can maybe potentially even turn you off of a video or a channel altogether uh, I'd like to know and uh, I think that that'll do it that's enough I don't know who listened to the end of this video uh, this is probably kind of a long one Maybe a little bit dry for some people. So, uh, what is what is bad when it's dry? Um, I don't know. Beef? <laughs> dry beef? Like overcooked dry beef? Dry beef! Uh, in the comments, if you actually made it to the, the ass end of the video. I appreciate you. 
Uh, anyway, uh, again, thanks everybody. And uh, this video was not brought to you by uh, Raid Shadow Legends. And until next time, take care, everyone. Goodbye.